Line Estate and other programs of a Grand State funeral. Details of the final moments of the late Queen are in this package. Funeral procession! Thousands of mourners lined the streets to pay their final respects to the Queen after a funeral service at Westminster. of the monarch's life and 70 year reign. After the pomp and pageantry of the state funeral at Westminster, attended by leaders from across the globe, including Nigeria's Vice President, Yemi Oshibaju, and High Commissioner to Britain, Sharafa Tunji Shola, a more intimate committal service was held at St. George's. The Queen's coffin the was laid at the royal vault, high, the resting place of many past monarchs. Below the chapel lie King Elizabeth George II, III, IV and V, William IV God, and others. Last year, Britain Prince Philip, Northern the Queen's Ireland, husband, was also laid to rest there. Territories. Queen, head of the Commonwealth, defender of the faith, and sovereign of the most noble Order of the Garter. Reigning monarch in the world history, may our soul rest in peace. The Ogo State Minister of Education, Science and Technology has gone round schools to monitor the level of preparedness as schools resume for the 2022-2023 academic session. Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Abayomi Arigbabo, led a team to some schools in Abelkuta, Ijebu and Remo Axis, where he assured of improved infrastructural development. The rest of the report is presented in this package. Early morning rush as both new and old pupils with much enthusiasm make their way to commence another academic session as schools in Ogun State resumed. Exercise, however, took him to few schools in Abelkuta, Ijebu, and Remoaxis of the state. The commissioner, who apparently was impressed with activities on first day of resumption, said series of engagements with school managers at ensuring smooth takeoff of new academic year has yielded the sad outcome. Arik Babu revealed that the visit was to also ascertain the level of infrastructure support needed to be put in place by government as they explained that though some of the schools have provided the ministry with the infrastructure data there was need for the ministry to engage in fact finding for record purpose monitor the resumption and see the level of uh, uh, preparation and the uh, extent to which uh, school uh, administrators principals teachers uh, have taken to interactions that we have had in the early days uh, concerning ensuring speed to cover schools uh, for today. In their remarks, the principal, Remo Secondary School, senior, Mrs. Olubu Mishwaibu, and Agumbi Ade Victory High School, Mrs. Kristana Odeyele, said academic works had resumed fully with smooth teaching and learning activities for the session. Schools visited in Ijebu Axis include Molikpa High School, 
are Savior's Anglican Primary School, Italoa Joda, Wesley Primary School, Muslim Primary and Comprehensive High School, all in Ijebodi, for Remo Axis, Shonido Community High School, and Remo Secondary School were visited. While in Abelkuta, for Larnidale International School, a private school, and Agumbiade Victory High School, Magmo, were also visited. The visit continues to schools in Ogun West Senatorial District. In the meantime, for public primary and secondary schools in Ogun State, the holiday season is over and classes have resumed across government schools to usher in a new academic session. OGTV News crew was at Ogun East Senatorial District and has report on the state of workload and admission processes for new intakes into primary and secondary school. Aderunke Adeyemi reports. Seven weeks after schools in Ogun State vacation for the third time holiday, the longest on the school session that signals the end of an academic year, schools have finally resumed. Parents of new intakes into the junior and senior class one are seen trooping into schools to get their wards officially registered into their new classes. Mrs. Eniton Osagi is one of such whose 14-year-old son is being registered into senior secondary school and commended the free education policy of the administration. It says, let me say it's going smoothly and everything is being processed through online so there's no stress at all. Nobody's forcing anybody to buy anything. You buy it at your own convenience. School principals commented on the cooperation of parents and teachers in making the takeoff of the new academic year less strenuous. The teachers are complying. All the teachers are in school are on ground. The students are on ground. About nine, about 85 percent of the students for this one are to high school, and parents are complying. For the incoming students from the SJS city. welcome test. Teacher have uh, already prepared the lesson notes for today. Even the welcome test is on in the class as you have visited them in the class. Certainly in Ogun State here we don't waste time. The moment they enter they have their welcome test. But because of the environment we've asked them to do some light cleaning and they are going to start their welcome test now. The resumption into the new academic year however does not only signal a new year for returning students, but rather new intakes get to experience new beginnings in their educational pursuit as they move into a new level from primary to post-primary school, while children of primary school age who had earlier been enrolled are taking the first steps in their educational life. Adirunke Adeyemi, OGTV News. In a related development, Public and private schools from Ogun West Senatorial District joined their counterparts across the state to resume for the first time 2022-2023 academic session. It was discovered that there was an upsurge of student enrollment, particularly in the junior schools. Kumishola Shokoya monitored the first day in school in Ogun West and she completes the story. The first part of call to monitor the first day in school this academic session was at Imashai, followed by Ibeshi and Ilaru, the Ogun West Senatorial District of the state. A huge number of pupils and students from nursery, primary and secondary sessions stormed their schools to begin the 2022-2023 new academic session. Some of the schools visited include Christ Church Primary School in Imashai, Oluasu High School, Yewai Egbado College, Jehovah Jireh African Church School, among others. Most of the students appeared in new uniforms while a number of them were quite excited on their promotion to a new class. I feel very happy to resume to school today. I really wish to work hard and learn hard. So if resume, I've seen my friends, my teachers, and I'm happy to see them. It's a privilege for me to be in a school because 
a lot of people are not in schools like this. So part because my aim is that I should at least become best in my class. After a routine cleaning, academic activities began in earnest. Principals, vice principals. So those that are just uh, coming to SS1, the turnout generally has been impressive. Uh, the students turn out massively, you know, then the turnout of teachers was impressive. All members of staff on ground. They have done welcome tests in all the classes today. The turnout of students today is very high. Principals and head teachers advise students and pupils to do away with devices that they have picked during the holiday with a warning that the school authority would not tolerate any form of indiscipline. Nothing. Kumisola Shokoya, Audit TV News. And still on school resumption, teachers in Ogun State Secondary Schools have been encouraged to always keep themselves updated and sharpen their skills to be ahead in the delivery of quality tuitions and instructions to meet the target set by the government. Chairman of Ogun State Teaching Service Commission, Evangelist Olalikon Ifedi, gave this encouragement while leading members of the Commission on Inspection of Schools in Ogun Central on the first day of school resumption. Matthew Shomi completes the report. Please see these students as people that you should work hard for. New ways of administration, academic excellence. These are the things we should expect in the new session. First day of school resumption for a new academic session and the State Teaching Service Commission is determined to set the tone for a rewarding and fulfilling session that will move the education sector forward in the realization of the vision of the government. Chairman of the Commission, Evangelist Olale Fede, is not only leading other members of the Commission on inspection of schools in Ogun Central to ensure smooth commencement of academic works by the teachers but also carrying them along on the expectation of the government from them. In clear demonstration of the resolve not to leave any school behind in the delivery of quality education, the delegation was on inspection of some of the schools in the rural areas under other local governments. Evangelist Ifede said the commission expected teachers to be at their best and give priority attention to their contributions in shaping the future of the students. They have their teachers on ground, no matter how many they are. Even schools with more than 30 something teachers, all the teachers are on ground. So it is an indication that our teachers are ready for the job ahead of them. And uh, our agreement with them is that they should make sure our students come out in flying clothes. And they have started that one from the first day of the Sunday. So I give kudos to them. They are really doing well. The school principal said, having received the necessary support from the government, they are ready to give their best in the new session. Uh, it has been very wonderful. I want to appreciate. The principals, some subversion to every month to enumerate some of the things that the principals are doing in the school. Some of the new intakes in the schools said they look forward to getting the best. The schools visited were Orile Ilugun Comprehensive High School, Ilugun, Egba Odeda High School, Odeda, Orile Case Grammar School, Olodo, Matthew Shomi, OGTV News. In another development, Secretary to Ogun State Government, Mr. Tukumbo Talabi, has announced his readiness to launch a scholarship program for indigent and other deserving potential students. Mr. Tukumbo Talabi disclosed this during the Youth Harvest of St. Luke's Anglican Church, 
Oru Ijebu in Ijebu North local government of the state as part of his plans for the development and emancipation of youths in the area. Talabi added that he is also considering an empowerment program for youths saying he is always favorably disposed to matters affecting them. He urged Nigerian youth to look beyond white-collar jobs, challenging them to think out of the box and initiate all the means of gainful engagement. There's a big plan we have, or there's a plan we have for a foundation separately. So maybe we can incorporate it. But it's already in the works, and I wouldn't want to call it a thought widely and come up with innovations and ideas that can create wealth. Elsewhere, Mr. Talabi has also called on APC members and stalwarts in Ifelodo State constituency that it was high time they closed ranks and reconciled with aggrieved members of the party, irrespective of their differences. He gave the charge during the constituency's meeting at Imoshose Primary School, Agoiwoi, Ijebu North local government, noting of provocation so as to ensure peaceful coexistence. Mr. Talabi, who expressed delight at the large turnout of crowd who had thronged the venue, admonished them to be their brother's keeper and encouraged those who are yet to collect their permanent voters card to do so without delay. Coming up, Federal government to deploy present day technology. Academic Staff Union of Universities also strike, which has dragged on for almost seven months. Recall, NAS had earlier said it will grant activities at the local and international airports across the country beginning from Monday, September 19, over the lingering strike. It said its decision to grant airports activities was due to the successes recorded in its road protests during which several highways were blocked. The leadership of NAS, which spoke in Akure, the Undo state capital, said the grounding of airports was to make the rich share in the pains of the students occasioned by the prolonged strike. Meanwhile, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has said it backs the National Association of Nigerian Students, NAS, on the ongoing protests over the lingering strike. ASU's National President, Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke, disclosed this in an interview with journalists. Professor Oshodeke praised the students for fighting for their rights. NAS on Monday stamped Moritala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos to mount pressure on the government to resolve the seven-month industrial strike by ASO. Chairman NAS National Task Force on End ASO Strike Now, Ojo Raymond Olumide, said students were tired of pleading with both parties to end the strike. The National Industrial Court has fixed Wednesday, September 21, to rule on the application for an interlocutory injunction filed by the federal government against the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASO. Justice Peter Hammond fixed the date on Monday after the lead counsel to the federal government, Mr. James Igwe, argued his application seeking an order of the courts restraining ASO from further continuing with the ongoing nationwide strike. 
the government had approached the court to challenge the ongoing industrial action by the university lecturers. But the court at the previous sitting last Friday adjourned the suit until Monday, September 19, to hear the interlocutory injunction of the government. Igwe had asked the court to give the suit an accelerated hearing due to the urgency of the matter to enable students to return to school. He stated that since the matter was already in court, it would be proper for the strike to be called off pending the determination of the suit. But counsel to ASU and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, said the union was currently meeting with stakeholders to ensure that the matter was resolved and appealed to the government to cooperate with the union to resolve the issue. In a related development, the House of Representatives is scheduled to meet with the Academic Staff Union of the University and other stakeholders in a bid to end the lingering strike embarked upon by the varsity lecturers. Mr. Yahaya Danzaria, in the clerk of the House of Representatives, disclosed this in a statement in, on Monday in Abuja. The meeting, Danzaria said, would take place on Tuesday at the National Assembly, the House of Representatives wing. According to him, the planned meeting with ASU and other critical stakeholders is geared toward finding a lasting solution to the lingering strike and backed upon by ASU, noting that the House was more worried about the negative consequences of the strike on the future and quality of education of the team in youth. The clerk lamented that the youth had been kept at home for the past seven months despite the intervention of the House and several well-meaning Nigerians over time to see that the matter was resolved. Hasu had on February 14 declared a nationwide strike pressing home their demands for revitalization funds for universities, renegotiation of the 2009 federal government ASU agreement, release of earned allowances for university lecturers, and deployment of the university transparency accountability solution. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMP, has said it will conduct a supplementary unified tertiary matriculation examination for 67 candidates on Saturday, September 24, 2022. JAMP explained that the examination is for 67 candidates who had registered for the 2022 UTME but who could neither sit the examination nor take the just concluded mop up UTME owing to one challenge or another to take the examination at specially designated centers. JAMS head, public affairs and protocol, Dr. Fabian Benjamin, said this in a statement on Monday morning. After the 2022 UTME, the board reviewed the entire exercise and those candidates with biometric challenges were given the opportunity of sitting a mop-up examination. The board also announced that since the conduct of a mop-up examination is a stopgap measure, it will not be allowed to be a permanent feature of its calendar. In what appears to be the biggest singular cocaine seizure in the history of Nigeria's premier anti-narcotic agency operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, have uncovered a major warehouse in a secluded estate in Ikurudu area of Lagos where 1.8 tons of illicit drug worth more than $278,250,000 equivalent of about $193 billion 775 million naira in street value were seized. Preliminary investigation reveals that Class A drugs were warehoused in the residential estate from where the cartel was trying to sell them to buyers in Europe, Asia and other parts of the world. They were stamped, they were stored in 10 travel bags and 13 drums. While commending all the officers and men of the agency involved in the extensive investigation, including those of the American Drug Enforcement Administration, Chairman and Chief Executive of NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohammed Buba Marwa retired, said the bust is a historical blow to the drug cartels and a strong warning that they will all go down if they fail to realize that the game has changed.
Construction giant CCECC now spends more hours on roads linking Ilaro to Owodi Yewa. A roving crew who visited Yewa North and South local government areas also noticed improved infrastructure in the area, with people now calling for the inclusion of speed breakers at completed portion of Ilaro, Iwoyi and Owodi Yewa. Fobora Adison reports. Construction giant CCECC fixing major roads in Ilaru, headquarters of Yewa South local government area, defying evident poor. We appreciate the government of Ogo State for remembering us for good. God will continue to support the government. They have started well, they will end well and serve us more after this tenure. The fixing of drainages and tiring of the portion leading to the local government complex has given the town of Ilaru another look. We suggest the quick completion of this project. God will support this administration. Another appeal is that we want bombs, speed breakers, on the Sabo end to break speed. The people of Ilaru say they now see a determined administration wishing to fix the roads which has been in the state of disrepair for years. As we are in Yewa North, the road from Ayetoro to Igonkoto and Imashai has been given the stone base. The Olu of Imashai, Oba Lukman Koye, says he was conscious of the importance of the road to the development of commerce in the area and the economy of Ogun State. Oba Koye applauded the governor of Ogun State, Prince Dakwa Biodu, for insisting that the contractor handling the project remains on site. The road linking uh, Imashai, um, Igon, Okoto, Ayetoro, yes, for him to have moved contractors to that site, that shows because it has been there for years, unattended to. And for the present uh, government to have deemed it fit to you know, award that place in the first, very first place on behalf of the good people of Imashai and the uh, entire you are not, we appreciate him, we thank him. Road remains one of the indices for measuring the performance of a government in Nigeria. Ade Fuwura, Ade Sonwo, OGTV News. Activities marking this year's National Day celebration in Ogun State will commence on Friday, 23rd September 2022 with a special Jumat service at the Central Mosque, Kobiti Abeokuta, starting at 12 noon. A statement by the Director of Administration and Supplies, Bureau of Political Affairs and Administration Office of the Governor, H.M. Ojo, has it that an interdenominational church service will be held on Sunday, 25th September 2022, at the Cathedral of St. Peter, Ake Abeokuta, beginning from 10 in the morning. The grand finale of the celebration will come up at the MKO Abiola Stadium, Kuto Abiokuta, on October 1, 2022, at 10 in the morning. The statement asks that the ceremony will feature parade by armed forces and police, march passed by various school, labor unions, and trade groups. Notable dignitaries have paid tributes to Mrs. Olushola Adebinkwe Adebite on the occasion of her 60th birthday. The wife of Ogun State Governor, Mrs. Bamidile Abiodun, who was represented by the wife of the Speaker, Ogun State House of Assembly, Mrs. Bolanli Oluomo, admonished younger generation to emulate humility and dedication to service from the life of the celebrant. Margaret Okulola was at St. Michael Anglican Church, Obantu Kabekuta, the venue of the event. Her report. <laughs> Just a number of days that we may apply our art to wisdom. This was the case for Mrs. Olushola Adebimbe Adebite, as friends, family, and well wishes, as well as dignitaries, including the wife of the Speaker of Ogun State House of Assembly, Mrs. Bolanle Uluomo, the wife of the Secretary to Ogun State Government, Mrs. Derin Talabi, and other members of the spouses of Ogun State Government Functionaries Association, SOSFA all gathered to rejoice with the celebrant on her 60th birthday. In a message titled The Unquantifiable Goodness of God, 
The preacher, Venerable Samson Adidokun, said the celebrant is a dedicated lover of God. A committed child of God. She also taught her children the way of the Lord. His knowledge second us. Representing the wife of Ogun State's governor, Mrs. Bamdili Abiodun, at the event, was the wife of the Speaker of Ogun State House of Assembly, Mrs. Bolan Leoluobon, who said there are a lot of things to learn from the life of the celebrant. She's very, very humble. The humility is 100% there. We should learn lessons from her. So one, humility, give respect to whom respect is due to, then to work for our creator. The celebrant, Mrs. Olushola Adebimpe Adegbite, could not hide her joy. She appreciated God for the grace to attain the age of 60 years. I am so much grateful to God. I bless God, I exalt Him, I adore Him, I magnify Him, and return all glory and honor and adoration to Him. To handle life is just to surrender to God. He is the ultimate. When you surrender to Him, you are telling Him you don't have any power. It's just your power. So He will draw you near and He will continue to guide, direct, and bless you. Mrs. Olushola Adebimbe Adebite was born on the 19th of September, 1962. She is a qualified nurse as she retired statutorily as the head of nursing department of the governor's office and government house clinics after 35 years of meritorious services. Margaret Okunlola, OGTV News. Our foremost energy and electricity law consultant, Professor Yemioke, has identified decentralization of the national grid as the panacea to Nigeria's perennial electricity problem. The professor of law gave this advice while speaking on OGTV current interface program Hot Seat. The university don also expressed doubt over the workability of global energy transition plant no dominated by clean and renewable energy. But the state government to license generation, transmission, and distribution for all grid electricity in line with their powers under item 14, second schedule of the Nigerian National National Constitution as amended. Any heresy is unconstitutional. There cannot be a federal regulator for a concurrent entity. So we should back off from national grid. I said national greed is national greed, being greedy. There's nothing called national greed. We can't be talking of national greed in the 21st century. We have concession greed. We should have hybrid greed. Yeah. We even have greed based on regions. For instance, southwest region, south, south, north, south. We need to disaggregate the, the grid structure. That's what I talk about, decentralized energy options. Let's now join Bukola Bakizu for business news to stay. This is the business segment of the news. Debt service gulped 6.16 trillion naira in 16 months, according to the 2023-2025 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. In 2021, the federal government spent 4.22 trillion naira on debt service and further 1.94 trillion naira between January and April 2022. A breakdown shows that domestic debt service cost 2.05 trillion naira, while foreign debt service gulped 946.29 billion naira in 2021. There was also 600 million naira sinking fund at 1.22 trillion naira interest on ways and means, which is defined as the government borrowing from the Central Bank of Nigeria. In the first four months of 2022, domestic debt servicing cost was 1.2 trillion naira, whereas foreign debt service expenditure amounted to 334.24 billion naira. There was also 405.93 billion naira interest on ways and means. The Director General of the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, 
Mr. Adewale Oyerinde has said that organized businesses are presently faced with over 50 different taxes, levies and fees at all tiers of government, some of which are duplicated. Oyerinde said additional taxes and stringent regulatory environment were threatening the organized private sector. He added that currently there were over five different bills at the National Assembly which sought to impose taxes on organized businesses. In addition to the notable taxes and levies which were of general application, he said organized businesses should not be made to suffer due to lack of proper economic planning and political will that have pervaded successive administrations. The Nigerian Exchange Limited recorded a second consecutive weekly decline at the close of transactions last week. The all share index and market capitalization depreciated by 0.44% to close the week at 49,475.42 points and 26.686 trillion naira respectively. This volume of shares traded was, however, lower than a total of 949.8 million units valued at 9.3 billion naira that changed ends in 18,525 deals during the preceding week. On the activity chart, the financial services industry measured by volume led the chart with 411.4 million shares valued at 3.9 billion naira traded in 9,471 deals, thus contributing 57.19% to the total equity turnover volume. The ICT industry followed with 177.8 million shares worth 55.8 million in 1,573 deals. Nigeria's crude oil revenue has continued to slump as the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries newly released monthly oil market report for September revealed that the country's crude oil output fell to 900,000 barrels per day last month. According to the OPEC report, Nigeria's crude oil production, according to data reported by direct sources, dropped from 1 million barrels per day recorded in July to 900,000 barrels per day in August. This is as the price of the country's crude grade, Bonnie Light, also dropped by 10% within the space of one month, that is July to August. Bonnie Light, which was sold for $117 per barrel in July, dropped to $106 per barrel in August. However, the country's revenue from crude oil rose significantly year on year as booming light price rose by 64% between 2021 and August 2022. Nigeria's crude oil production has been witnessing significant drops for some years now as the country last recorded a 1.4 million barrels per day in 2020. And lastly, the federal government has so far paid 4.04 million dollars to five international oil companies as cash call arrears repayments and has spent 12.43 billion naira this year on pipeline protection and maintenance latest updates on pipeline security and maintenance costs obtained from the nigerian national petroleum company limited showed that the 12.43 billion naira was spent by the government through nnpc between january and june this year Figures from the oil company indicated that pipeline security and maintenance gobbed 1.1 billion naira, 368 million naira, and 2.61 billion naira in July, February, and March 2022, respectively. Nigeria's crude oil production has continued to slump due to the repeated vandalism of pipelines and attendant theft of humongous volumes of crude. And that was the business segment of the news. Thanks so much for watching. Back to Yabo for the rest of the bulletin. Thank you.